welcome to this review of The Scorpion King. Joining me I have David J Bradley of To Be Confirmed Productions, Thomas Hughes of Tea Money 35 and Michael Wynne Johnson of Real School. Now to me The Scorpion King it's like a poor man's Conan the Barbarian and it really doesn't have much going for it. That may have something to do with the fact that it was directed by Chuck Russell. Yeah, not exactly a household name. However, you've probably seen movies that he's done before. He did the 80s remake of The Blob, which was a pretty scary film. He made The Mask with Jim Carrey. He made Eraser, which is a very underrated action film with Schwarzenegger. And then, of course, he went on to The Scorpion King. The Scorpion King, a prequel to a sequel of a film that was a remake. As a teenage boy, I rather liked it. I thought it was pretty fun. Not quite as fun as the Mummy movies that it span off from, but fun in its own way. The Scorpion King is so far removed from its creator, The Mummy Returns, that I just found myself watching with a raised eyebrow. The Scorpion King is without question one of the greatest guilty movie pleasures of my generation. In his first starring role, this is the first of three films that truly showcases the beginning of the transition that is The Rock from WWE Superstar into Dwayne Johnson, the actor. Dang, what did I like about The Scorpion King? Well, not a whole heck of a lot. Let's start with, of course, enjoying The Rock. Many women do. But the fact of the matter is, he was one of my favorite wrestlers when I was growing up. And this was his first big opportunity at a big blockbuster film and being the lead. And in a previous video, I talked about how Brendan Fraser was this great throwback to a charming kind of roguish archetype. But The Rock, not so much. He gets enough charm coming across in his character, but that's really not what his character is all about. And he got an opportunity later in other films to show us that he can, yes, kind of act. In Dwayne Johnson's first leading role, there isn't really much acting going on here as it still seems like he had a huge attachment to The Rock. Every scene has him pulling some sort of wrestling face. And the character is a confusing one as in Mummy Returns, he was this big evil tyrant warlord and in The Scorpion King, he is a hero fighting a big, evil, tyrant warlord. But The Scorpion King is never about acting, even though it does co-star Michael Clark Duncan. Kelly Hughes, pretty good too, but the fact is The Rock never really needed an opportunity to act in this movie, so we have to rely on the action, which is also fairly forgettable, as is the rest of the cast, as is the plot, as is unfortunately a lot about this film. As a fan of wrestling from back then, seeing The Rock doing all that stuff was pretty cool. I kind of don't want to revisit it because I suspect that it might be terrible. Can you smell what the Scorpion King is cooking? Because it stinks. There is one thing that has not stood up well these past 16 years. As with its predecessor, The Mummy Returns, The Scorpion King has terrible computer-generated imagery. I mean, for example, the fire ant scene and the scene in which Matthias eats a scorpion in the desert and the forest just appears. It looked like it came out of a late 90s program from Microsoft Windows. If I had to pick one thing that I remember as being a good scene from that movie, it is the bit where the sorceress, and I think her name is just the sorceress, I looked it up on IMDb earlier and I don't think that character had an actual name, but she has to put her hand into a bunch of jars and like most of them have snakes in, I think all but two have snakes in. And she's meant to be able to use her powers to just put her hand in and not get hurt. But this is after she has lost her powers because she slept with the Scorpion King. And she puts her hand in and she pulls out a snake deliberately and threatens the villain with it. And I remember that as being a good scene. Just like, like a good bit of tension in her putting her arm in. 
And then when she pulled out the snake and it was all wrapped around her, it was just really cool. And if I had to pick something as the worst part of that film, it would be that when the sorceress sleeps with the Scorpion King, she loses her powers. Because I guess women aren't allowed to have sexual agency? I guess that's bad? Because that all must be a virgin or loser's power trope hasn't been used before. Da -da -da! There are many memorable moments throughout The Scorpion King. Yet, a fact that people tend to forget about was that the song I Stand Alone from the Massachusetts rock band Godsmack was originally written for this motion picture. The song would go on to become one of the most influential and popular rock songs of that era. Did you know that there are in fact several direct-to-DVD Scorpion King sequels and prequels? So there is Scorpion King 2 Rise of a Warrior in 2008, The Scorpion King 3 Battle for Redemption in 2012, the Scorpion King 4, Quest for Power in 2015, and this year, the yet-to-be-released Scorpion King Book of Souls. So the Scorpion King franchise has outlasted the franchise it span off from, which has already been rebooted. The Scorpion King has more films than the Mummy series. The Scorpion King is a more successful series than the series that it span off from. joining me boys it's been an absolute pleasure you can check out their channels by clicking on the links in the description box now it is your turn to have your say pop your thoughts and feelings in the comment box below on the scorpion king thanks for watching